Well, hey, kids, Grandpa here. How's everybody doing today? <clears throat> Anyhow, up here in my cabin in Alaska, some of my um, viewers commented to me uh, that they uh, thought it'd be a good idea for me to post an accounting of uh, why I did a GoFundMe page and um, how I planned on using the money. They thought it might be helpful if people had a better understanding of that. And so... <laughs> Miss Lily. Uh, and so I'm going to go ahead and do that. But before I do that, I wanted to just kind of address something. Um, uh, it seems like anytime somebody tries to do something like a GoFundMe, people get a lot of crap for it. Um, and I've noticed it not just on my end, but it seems like uh, I've seen a number of people attacked just because they try to do a GoFundMe, you know, because because sometimes people get a problem or they have an issue. You know, uh, one example, there was a fella. Hi there. <laughs> you want to get in on the video, do you? Okay. Um, but seriously, there was a fella that uh, had lost his boat uh, during the hurricanes. And uh, it's a boat that he lived on. So he lost his house and he lost everything that he had. And so now he no longer, you know, his boat got destroyed during the hurricane. And so... He tried to do a GoFundMe to try to, uh, you know, address getting his boat fixed back up and stuff so he could have a house. And um, instead, people just came out of the woodwork and, you know, were chewing him up one side and down the other. How could you do a GoFundMe and, you know, you own a $180,000 boat or whatever it was. And, of course, it wasn't valued like that. People exaggerate in those circumstances. And... Um, uh, but the fact remains is, you know, for whatever reason, the guy didn't have adequate coverage on it or what have you and, and was got himself in a pickle. OK, uh, everybody in life at some point or another, you're going to get yourself in a pickle. And if you haven't yet, you will. It's going to happen. To, I mean, I, I would have to think that 90 percent of the people at some point in their life get themselves in a pickle and need help. And um, I'm really disappointed in how many people in our society um, you know, respond so negatively to that, you know, so the guy had a problem and he's asking for help. If you don't want to help, fine. Just like me doing my GoFundMe. If you don't want to jump in there and contribute to the GoFundMe, that's fine. But don't insult the people that do. Don't, uh, don't criticize other people or, you know, I've seen people on some of the comments on some of the channels, you know, calling them names because they were, you know, nice enough, decent enough folks or, probably people that have been in this situation themselves at one point and, you know, now have a little bit of empathy and, and understanding, you know, um, I've been very successful most of my life. I've been a hardworking fella, but I kind of had a, you know, a, a storm of things that added up and put me in a real bind right now. Not a normal situation for me. Um, so uh, I just wanted to say, <laughs> openly and knowingly, I'm going to try to go ahead and do this, anticipating there's going to be a storm of people that are going to, to jump on it. And I think I understand where it comes from. You know, it's kind of the old, uh, you know, wolf pack mentality, if you will. Uh, I think there's certain people out there that maybe, uh, well, I'm going to say haven't evolved as much, but maybe they just haven't themselves been in a situation where they needed help. And uh, so they attack you know, those guys that are down and, and it's just like a wolf pack, you know, or, you know, the, if one of the pack gets sick and, and wounded, the other members of the pack kill that one because it's a, uh, it's a draw on the resources of the pack. Um, that's what wolves do. You know, if you're in a wolf pack and, and you get hurt and sick or what have you, the other wolves in the pack will tend to kill you. Lions do the same thing. Uh, most of the predator types have that same kind of reaction. Uh, I would think human beings would be a bit more evolved than that um, because we have the opportunity to to think a little bit for ourselves. But I think a lot of people kind of fall into that, you know, that mentality, you know, get a guy while he's down. I think the reason we have a statement like that, kicking a guy while he's down, is just because it is so integral uh, and, and a sad commentary on uh, us as human beings. So it is what it is. And, um, uh, it's sad that there's so many people out there that, you know, naturally jump to the conclusion that just because someone's trying to do a GoFundMe that he's, 
some kind of scam artist, which I've been accused of and people assaulting my character and, and what have you, you know, whatever. I, you know, I, I'm fine with my character. I know the kind of person that I am and the good that I'm trying to do in the planet. And have I stumbled and fallen? Have I had business failures in the pa past? Yes. And you know what? I've made sure that every single person that got caught up in that got paid. Did they get paid late? Yep, you betcha. They got paid late. But everybody got 100% of the money that was due them. Um, that's just the way I, that's just the way I like to behave. So anyhow, so with that said, and with the expectation that the wolves are going to come out and try to chew my bones for it, for those of you that uh, are a bit more evolved and asked for it, I'm going to go ahead and uh, give you the breakdown of why I am uh, doing this and what I am trying to to accomplish. So here is the spreadsheet that I have for my cost of getting down to Florida. And, and this is what my GoFundMe is for. My GoFundMe is so that I can get down to Florida and, and, and either just do my channel, which is one option, or get down to Florida and restart my real estate business down there so that I can acquire um, some of the other tools and resources that are on my list for things that I'd like to accomplish. So anyhow, here's the breakdown of what I need to do. Uh, my truck registration and tags are expired. I have to get that done. Uh, it's 325 up here in Alaska. I have to get Lily to the vet. She's got to get her shot, her rabies updated, and we have to do a wellness check, which is required for going across Canada. Um, they, uh, if you go in and you don't have your wellness check papers, then you have to wait there at the checkpoint, um, which can be, you know, you could be waiting, especially up here at the Alaska side. Um, you could be four or five days waiting for a veterinarian to drive all the way up there to check your dog as you try to enter the border. So rather than waiting for some veterinarian to drive, you know, for a day's drive up there or whatever to be able to check on your dog and have that expense, um, we've learned up here in Alaska that you go to the vet and you get a vet check. That paperwork has to be very current. It has to be within the last 30 days uh, before you go uh, across Canada. And actually, the, the border people have said they like to see it, you know, like in five to 10 days. So we try to do that. So I, just before I leave, I have to get her to the vet and do that. Um, and I have to get an oil change done. It's a 5,000 mile trip. My truck's due. Uh, so I need to get an oil change done. So my tree, my pre-trip expenses, $645. So I'm sure those, you know, wolves out there wanting to attack, I'm just giving them all kinds of good fodder. They're going to pick this apart and tell me how I'm wrong in every aspect of it. But it's the it's figured as best as I could figure it. OK, I broke down my fuel expenses to two legs. One, because uh, fuel in Canada is a whole lot more expensive than fuel in the lower 48, especially up in the Yukon and northern British Columbia. Uh, it tends to be a dollar a gallon higher than what it is here in Alaska. And right now we're at two ninety nine a gallon here in Alaska. So I'm expecting to pay the equivalent of three ninety nine U.S. for a gallon of fuel in Canada. Realizing in Canada, I also have to have exchange rates. I'm buying it by the liter and not the gallon. And and there's the loss of transferring U.S. dollars to Canadian dollars. So in any event. The first leg to go from Alaska down to Montana is $1,164. That's 4,364 miles. My truck gets 15 miles to the gallon if I'm not towing a trailer. Um, that's 290 gallons of fuel, $4 a gallon. <clears throat> the second leg is to drive from Montana to Florida with a stop in Ohio because I want to stop and see my grandchildren. And so that is uh, $205. That's 1,231 miles, 15 miles to the gallon, 82 gallons at 250 a gallon. Now, there's an option that I could have driven a more direct route. Instead of going to Montana, I could have driven across Canada straight to Ohio. Uh, however, that keeps me in Canada uh, where fuel prices are higher. Um, so comparing the mileage and the fuel costs, it's actually cheaper for me to go the longer distance. 
uh, to go straight down to Montana and then drive across. It's uh, about 200 miles longer, but the uh, the difference between $4 a gallon Canadian fuel and $2.50 a gallon U.S. fuel uh, makes it worthwhile for me to do that. So now I also included in here some motels and showers, uh, $400. It's about a 10, 11 day drive altogether. And I figure I'm probably going to have to stop three or four times uh, during that period for a shower or a motel. Um, so I, I put that figure in there. Uh, it, I don't know how much of that I'm actually going to need, but I am going to need, you know, 11 days, I'm going to need a shower or two in there. And, and, um, I'm good, planning on sleeping in my truck. Um, if I, if I can, I don't know if I can fit everything in my truck and my bed in there as well. Um, I guess I could sleep up in the front seat, uh, but I might need to get out and get a couple good nights sleep somewhere along the way for safety purposes. So anyhow, meals, I figured about $25 a day for food. Uh, unfortunately when you're on the road, um, but I might be able to reduce that pretty substantially, uh, by shopping in the grocery stores and just getting, you know, some fruits and, and, and carrots and stuff like that to eat along the way. Uh, and then somewhere in route, uh, probably once I get to Ohio, I'll need to get another oil change done. Cause that'll be, you know, 5,000 miles later. So, um, I don't know about you guys. I usually do my oil changes every 3000. I could go longer, but I'm going to try to get this truck to, uh, to Florida in good shape. And so it's going to need another oil change. Okay. <clears throat> so now I've, I've gotten myself to Florida. And now I need to go boat shopping. So I did set aside some fuel for boat shopping. I really don't have a clue how much I'm going to need to boat shop. Uh, I'm looking at boats all up and down the East Coast. I'm looking at boats in the Great Lakes. I'm looking at boats uh, in the Gulf of Mexico. I'm looking at boats on the West Coast. I would prefer going down to Florida and buying a boat there because I can get my real estate license in Florida. Uh, but I don't know that that's the case. So as a caveat, I put in about $100 for, for boat shopping fuel, and I also put in some meals uh, while boat shopping because, you know, it's going to take me, obviously, you know, a few days to be able to go and look at this boat, and look at that boat, and, and, and work out some sort of a deal. I am hoping to spend $5,000 as a down payment on a boat. Um, either a down payment on a boat where someone will do some owner financing. I have spoken to some people. There are some options that way or just buying a really crappy boat for five grand. Um, it all depends on what deal I can work out and how I can get that situated. Uh, I figured some miscellaneous expenses like, you know, uh, some of the boats I'm looking at are up on the hard. So I'm going to have to pay for the travel lift and to put them into the water and have them in a marina while we're, you know, getting the engines running and whatever so that the boat can actually move. Um, so I'm budgeting $1,500 for those expenses, maybe having a survey done if necessary, um, depending on how questionable I think the boat is. I don't know. So I put in a budget, give myself a little room there. Uh, and then there's the initial stocking up of the boat and living expenses uh, while we're getting the boat in the water and getting things going. So I put in a thousand for that. Okay. Before I get into the the office startup stuff, let me uh, let me touch base with my notes over here. Um, depending on the growth of my channel while in route, and I'm anticipating that there's going to be a an increase in viewership and and probably contributions to the super chat and that kind of stuff, um, and and new subscribers because now I'm actually finally getting to get on the boat and get going. So I'm expecting to see some pretty some pretty good growth on my channel while I'm doing that, I think. Uh, at least uh, other people have told me they, they would expect to see that. So uh, depending on how well it grows, I may elect when I get down to Florida just to go ahead and sell my truck and just do my channel and not sell real estate. Um, frankly, that's going to be a pretty ballsy move for me to be able to do that. I don't have a high confidence level with that, uh, but that is a possibility Similar trucks to mine are selling in that area for ten to twelve thousand dollars in South Florida. Um, at least that's what I've been able to see. So, 
Uh, however, if I open my real estate office, that's going to allow me the opportunity to earn uh, money to afford, you know, to make boat improvements and to stock up the boat with various equipment that I have on my wish list. Um, and so it's probably the the more responsible thing to do. But, you know, while I'm there working as a realtor, I, I'll still be able to create content um, from Florida. I mean, there's easily a year's worth of content that could be done from the Florida Keys, talking about, you know, you know, fishing and, and the sailing life and you know, the marinas and the boating spots and, you know, the places to go boating and the beaches and, and what have you. Um, and then over in the Bahamas is only one day sail over to the Bahamas. So there's plenty of content. I can easily uh, produce a whole bunch of really good content for a year staying in that area. And if I was doing that, I would have an opportunity to earn uh, pretty substantially there in, in Florida. I had an office that I opened up there for a while in 2015. Uh, and even though I ended up going through a real nasty divorce in Florida while I was there, which certainly distracted me away from my work, I was still able to earn a pretty substantial income uh, there as a realtor. So I'm, I'm kind of uh, interested in getting back there to, um, to do more of that. So, uh, and, and then lastly, as I set my GoFundMe goal, let me get, you're in the way here. Um, as I set my GoFundMe goal at $10,000, it's because I expect uh, to earn the difference. As you can see from my accounting, uh, what I'm ex anticipating spending is going to be more than that. Uh, but I expect I'll have some earnings from Google AdSense um, and from the sale of uh, the auction items I'm selling up here um, and donations to live chats and stuff. So, so the odds are, and the smart thing for me to do, would be for me to go ahead and to set up my, my Florida real estate office. And so I have to pay for my application for the little state. I have to pay for a test center, my real estate schooling, which I have to do again, even though I just did it a couple of years ago, it expired. Uh, the license expired. So I have to start all over again. I've got to pay the fees to the multiple listing service, uh, get need a Florida business license, fingerprinting, and they do a FBI check on me again. Um, and then um, I have a fund here for some basic uh, starting office supplies, paper signage, uh, postage stamps, that kind of stuff. Surprisingly, as a realtor, I'm kind of old school, even though I use the latest technology for marketing and, you know, the web and the Internet and social media and video and stuff. Um, uh, my marketing, a lot of it is based on direct mail, you know, old school, hand addressed letter in the mail. Hey, are you interested in selling your property? And, and we do something in, in real estate called farming, where we, we pick a specific area and we uh, we tend to direct a lot of attention, you know, at least once a month or so, uh, get some sort of marketing piece to everybody in that community, you know, advising them that we're working and we know what's going on in that community and, and we're watching the prices and educating them. So anyhow, so my total came out to 12683 uh, to date, my GoFundMe has $680 already donated, and so I've got a shortfall of about $12,000. Uh, really, I've only got a shortfall of, of uh, um, you know, $9,400 because my GoFundMe is set for $10,000, uh, but shortfall from this budget. So, <clears throat> and of course, you know, ideally, uh, I would love to get out there as soon as possible. But you know, at six hundred eighty thousand or six hundred eighty dollars so far on on this ten thousand, I I think it would be foolish of me to try to leave Alaska if I didn't have enough money to do my pre trip items, my in route expenses, and the funds to to get the boat set up. And so, I really, uh, uh, as much as I would love to just leave here and head out. Um, I think it would be, uh, I think it would be prudent of me to make sure that I've got my ducks in a row, uh, before I do that. So, um, lest, lest I be down in Florida and just be another homeless bum on the beach, you know, um, I got to get this thing funded. So I have my plans going forward. So I am continuing to work up here in Alaska. I did have a, uh, um, a lady buying one of my listings. Um, and thought that was going to push me over the top financially to give me uh, the money to go ahead forward and doing that. Unfortunately, that fell apart. 
I do have a couple that have looked at the property and are considering buying my farm. Um, I don't know where that's going to end up with. There's nothing concrete. There's no solid offers on that. So that's kind of where we're at. So, so I started to go fund me. Okay. And, you know, for those wolves out there that want to chew me to bits or, you know, uh, I, I don't, I don't understand it. I, I think, I don't know if they're jealous that people actually donate to somebody else. I, I have seen comments where people have been very cruel, uh, you know, and calling bad names to those people that have donated to campaigns like mine. Um, it's just, you know, I don't understand it, folks. If you don't want to donate, then don't. But, but really, what business is it of yours if somebody else wants to? Uh, it just makes no sense to me. Uh, and I've seen this and, and I've been on the other side. You know, most of my life, I've been a guy contributing to these sorts of programs. Uh, not the guy that's been the beneficiary of it. In fact, uh, you know, it's, it's hard. Uh, it's hard emotionally to, uh, to say, Hey, I need help. And, you know, this is the first time in my life I've ever been in a situation where I'm saying, you know, Hey, I, I'd like, I, I need help. And again, one of the reasons why I'm doing this, um, I get comments from time to time. Most recently I had uh, a guy make a comment. And he reminded me that, you know, I'm, I'm losing money by being up here in Alaska. Um, my channel, I've, I've built a sailing channel. I've got over 2,300, uh, 2,360 some subscribers uh, for doing a sailing channel from Alaska, from a little cabin up in Alaska. Um, if I actually got on a boat and was able to make the content that I want to make, uh, you know, he, he correctly uh, reminded me that my channel will blow up is the term that he used. And he's not the first person that said that to me. I've heard that time and time again. Um, and so I know that I would be much better off being in Florida doing that. And more importantly, I could do more good. Um, I could I could be creating some content and creating some positive stuff going on in the world. Um, you know, just like I talked about the other day, I had a lady that, um, you know, thought all this uh, conservation stuff that I talk about, you know, and plastics in the water and all that is just hooey. Um, she's now currently battling cancer, um, successfully on my dad. She had some great news, which was awesome. Uh, but she, she saw a video, uh, another video about plastics and, you know, it was confirming everything that I had brought up and it, it really impressed her, uh, and made her think about me. And, you know, it showed that I'm having success getting the word out. Come on. Oh gosh. She just wants my attention. Don't you, you just want my attention. Is that it? You just want my attention? Yep. Okay. Anyhow, guys, I'm going to go ahead and end this. <laughs> Thanks, sweetie. I'm going to go ahead and end this here. Um, I am working on a pretty special video for me. It's somebody's birthday this week. Somebody turns two years old. Somebody. I wonder who that is, Lily. Somebody turns two years old this, this week. And uh, it's been well established with Labradors that their brain gets delivered when they turn 12 years old. So I'm hoping instead of her chewing on me, which she likes to do right now, her brain may actually show up and she won't be such a nutcase. Yes, I said you were a nutcase. Okay. Come on, get down so I can finish up. Please get down. Good girl. Anyhow, guys, I'm going to go ahead and end this here. Um, I take Miss Lily for a walk. And uh, I'm going to work on editing her birthday video, which I should have out here pretty soon. If not, I'll be doing my live stream again on Wednesday morning. And I hope to see you guys then. So and if you're one of those wolves out there just ready to rip me up for daring to ask for help, then, you know, all I got to say is, you know, maybe you need to, to think about yourself. If, if you're the kind of person that is so bothered by the fact that I'm doing a GoFundMe page, or asking people's help so that I can do better in the world. Um, I think you got to do some long haul, hard soul searching on your own. But anyhow, guys, that's what I'm doing. If you can jump in and help on the GoFundMe, that's awesome. I certainly do appreciate it. And it'll help move me along and get me going further. If you can't, I certainly understand that. And uh, no, no problem, you know, no, no responsibility. You certainly have no obligation to help me whatsoever, but if you can, it's greatly appreciated. So anyhow, this is Grandpa signing off. We'll catch you guys another day. Please be good to each other. Thanks, folks. We will.
see you later, I think. How do I stop?